And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked by Abu Dharr radiyallahu anhu. Abu Dharr came to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said to him, Oh Sini ya Rasulullah, oh Sini, give me advice. It's good, it's good from time to time to go to people that are more learned than you and ask them for advice. For Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to him, إذا عملت سيئة فأتبعها حسنة تمحها That if you were to intentionally commit a sin عملت is different to فعلت عملت means to intentionally commit a sin سيئة التنوين and سيئة meaning any sin النكرة تفيد العموم any sin major sin, minor sin, you name it as long as it's a sin if you did intentionally you committed any sin what do you do? he said to him فأتبعها حسنة Fa immediately follow it up with a good deed, any kind of good deed. Follow it up. Don't sit there and say this is not the right time to ask Allah for forgiveness. There is no such thing as a bad, inappropriate time to make dhikr of Allah and to seek forgiveness of Allah. Even if you're halfway in your sin, there's no such thing. And if you're in halfway of your sin, you don't say, oh, this is a bad time to make dhikr and istighfar. Let me wait until I finish my sin and then I ask Allah for forgiveness. No, no, this is wrong. Who gave you this understanding? But that, when you are committing the sin, that is when you need the dhikr Allah. So you can get you away from this desire, from this temptation. Because nothing would, because at that moment the heart is dead. And nothing would revive the heart other than dhikr Allah. So, إِذَا عَمِلْتَ سَيَّئَةً فَأَتْبِعْهَا حَسَنَةً Immediately, immediately follow up with a good deed. Any kind of good, do anything, anything. What's the result? تَمْحُوهَا It wipes it away. Then Abu Dharr رضي الله عنه وجزاه الله خيرا He asked a very important question. He said to him, يا رسول الله He said to him, أمن الحسنات لا إله إلا الله It's from among the hasanat saying la ilaha illallah that's a big question when nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam answered him but the, the answer is 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 huge it's incredible he said to him hiya afdalul hasanat it is the best of the good deeds nothing is better than la ilaha illallah nothing you know why because the, the best, the best and the best of the good deeds is the obligations. The most beloved deeds to Allah are the obligations. And on top of the list of the obligations is a tawheed, which is la ilaha illallah. So as a result, it was the best of hasanat. And my brother in Islam, this, this means when you do a sin, say la ilaha illallah after it. There's a special effect with la ilaha illallah. When you combine it with sins, it dissolves the sins, dissolves them. La ilaha illallah is like a sharp knife that cuts anything besides Allah in the heart. Because when someone commits a sin, it's a desire. It's a temptation in the heart that pushed him towards the sin. There's something in the heart other than Allah that pushed you to the sin. Because Allah Azza wa Jal, inna Allah la ya'muru bil fahsha. Inna Allah la ya'muru bil fahsha. Allah Azza wa doesn't command people to commit sins. Allah doesn't command us to do that. So if you commit a sin, you followed someone else. You followed your nafs. You obeyed the shaytan. Allah Azza wa said, Ya Allah ta'budu shaytan alam ahad ilaykum ya bani adam Allah ta'budu shaytan. Didn't I tell you, oh man, do not follow the sin, the shaytan. So you, you obeyed, you followed something. And then you need to cut that out of your heart. How do you do that? With la ilaha illallah. And la ilaha illallah can only come from the heart. And then uttered on the tongue. Why the ulama rahimahumullah, they said, لِأَنَّ حُرُوفَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ جَوْفِيَّةِ The letters of la ilaha illallah are, are all internal letters. This is يعني, symbolic and it implies the fact that it is supposed to come out min al jawf. It comes out internally from inside, from the heart. And then it's uttered on the tongue. And you say, La ilaha illallah after a sin. Wallahi, it's as though you poured ice on something that is hot because sins, they have heat to it. 
Oh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, تحترقون, تحترقون. When the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described sins, he compared them to fire. Someone burning. You know, if, if we put petrol and burn someone, what happens? He runs left and right. The only thing is just turn me off right now. Or if not, just let me die from my misery. That's how sins are. But in the spiritual world, they're like this. We need to see them like this and deal with them like that.